I found the water at Mud Spring. It literally is. There's mud everywhere. There's a spring. Good morning. Here's my campsite in the daytime. There's a trail right there. And there's my campsite. Not the best. It's very canted. And what's funny is right here there's a sign. <laughs> and watch. I bet you 100 feet up there's going to be a much, much better campsite. But uh, there's a water source here. I heard it was real muddy. Good morning again. Packed up, ready to go. And we're looking at the map that I slept right by. But we are here. Today's an interesting day because there is a fire closure right here. Palisade Trail is where we're going to get off. And we're going down the Palisade Trail there. And we're actually going all the way up and then over. It appears to be shorter distance than the official AZT, which goes around like that. So I'm not sure what the miles are going to be like. I'm not sure what the elevation gain is going to be like. I'm not sure where there's any water. There's like a Girl Scout camp there, but the last reports that the faucets are still off. So I, I don't know what to expect. So at our last water source, which would be Sycamore Reservoir, I'm going to get 5 liters, 6 liters, because... I may have to camp out in there or in there somewhere. I'm not quite sure <laughs> because it's 13 miles to the Palisade Canyon intersection and I can only go maybe six or seven. So I might camp out in the Girl Scout camp, stealth camp out there. If water's off, I bet no one's there. So here's that water source right near where I slept, but you can tell cows frequent it all the time. Not the prettiest water source, definitely, but I mean, in a pinch. I mean, we have found cow patties don't taste that bad. Although, I don't know about fresh ones. I, have, I assume fresh ones would be pretty gross because they stink. So one thing I did before starting the Arizona Trail to account for any possible alternates is I, I, I have Gaia and I downloaded all the Arizona maps of Gaia. And recently on Gut Hooks, people were posting like in text what this alternate was and how to go. But it's so confusing when you don't know what you're seeing. And in Gut Hooks, they don't show you much of the Palisade Canyon Trail. Like the map back there was actually excellent. It showed the entire Canyon Trail. And that's what we'll be taking. But without visualization, just words of like, oh yeah, just take this trail until you get to the ranger station. I was like, is that a mile? Is that six miles? What are you talking about? They didn't even list the lengths. But with Gaia, I was able to track it all. And I know that while we're hiking, I can make sure I'm on the trail. I hear the trail is pretty overgrown. So maybe I'll be on it, but the map will be off. Who knows? All right, I'm gonna have to get moving. My hand is freezing. It was a cold one this morning. There was ice on the inside of my tent is very cold for some reason it's, it's a tough one it's super hot during the day and it's super cold at night you just don't get any good middle range time look at this i haven't seen this during the daytime in a while it's clouds just kind of scattered low clouds what do you think alto stratus all over I haven't seen any saguaro cacti in a long time, and there's one right there, all by itself. I wonder if like a bird ate one of the seeds and flew out here and, you know, looks like there's another one up the hill, a little further to the right, huh. At mile 158 or so, there is a pool, but it's super murky. I guess not murky is the word, it's just really, there's a lot of plants underneath. And it's small. There's no way this is going to survive for long with the sun. I was going up and I heard these bumping sounds. I was like, what is that animal coming at me? And I looked up. It was a mountain bicyclist coming down. So it definitely helps not listen to music at all because you can hear him coming. And he was coming fast because I'm basically on a 1,000 foot climb. And he's on a 1,000 foot roll down. And then uh, he rolled by and he said someone else is coming. But yeah, I'd say if you listen to music, just use one earbud, but keep an ear out. It can come up from behind you too. 
I'm at the saddle and now I'm heading down to the road to Tucson. That series of climbs is hard and hot and hard. I think this down's gonna be kind of hard too, but it's just the start of the day. I'm only on five miles and I'm starting to get tired already. I still have to get to the, uh, I already forgot the name, <laughs> that junction, that alternate junction and start climbing more there. It's gonna be a long day. I, I think I might just push 17. I think maybe the junction's 13, so I'll try to go 13 more and then look for any available campsite after that. It should still be a good day for me. All right, let's head on to the road and hope there's a cache there so I can at least get one fresh liter before I head on to the water supply, water source, which is about 5.2 miles away. So this is unexpected, way down, way down. It looks like the trail is gonna go right through there. It's like an RV park or something. There's a huge parking lot and there's just a ton of RVs parked along there. Uh, I think chances are good I'll get water there. There's some kind of race going on. I see banners up and I see people running. Hmm, they're going down, but that's, they must have gone up there at some point. That's tough. And here we are at the bear box at the trailhead. Let's see if there's water. There's a lot of water. I was wondering what people were saying with big reds. What's a big red? Taste it, you'll get it. Is it like cinnamon or something? I'm gonna have one. I don't know what it is. And I'm gonna take a liter and a half. Yeah, that should get me to the next water source in about five miles. Cheers. I don't know what it tastes like. Hmm, strawberries a little? Like cherries, yeah, like cherries. <sighs> so much carbonation. It's pretty nice, Molino Campground is right here. There's actually a marathon and they're running down. This is mile 19 and uh, we have trash. So much trash I need to get rid of. There's a marathoner now. It must be the early head, early bunch because we're mile 19 and they're pushing hard. But a lot of vehicles here, just picnic area, I guess. A lot of cool vehicles too. All right, let's get rid of the trash and get going. This is essentially four days of trash. It's been three nights, but three full days. This is unmentionables and I got this. I was gonna use it as more, but uh, this thing was all filled up and you can see it's spam, oatmeal, mashed potatoes, all kinds of stuff. I can't wait to get rid of all this. It's, it's so nice getting rid of trash. Hard to believe we're running marathon right here in Arizona in this heat. I guess it's pretty cool really once you're in the shade. It's just that sun is just so strong. Here comes a runner. She's doing well. Well, I took a nice little break on this rock here. Ate something and uh, I'm ready to get going. It's 1045. I only did 6.2 miles so far. Looks like by noon I'll probably only get about seven and a half, maybe eight. And now I'll push another eight, eight and a half, and then I should be good. Pretty good for today. So let's get going. Let's find this trail from here. I think it's over there somewhere. This whole area, there are a lot of recreational people here. We're heading towards Gordon Hibashi recreation area as well. There's a lot of cars parked here and there. It is Saturday, so reasonable. A lot of mountain bicycles today as well. The problem with it being Saturday isn't so much that it's crowded at all. I mean, it's there down there, I don't mind. It's that they're barbecuing. I could smell the barbecue and I won't get any of it. So many people are grilling because it's lunchtime. I want some, I want some ribs, badly. I know at Oracle there's a steakhouse. I just, one time I had service, I tried to look for places to stay. There are no, nothing in booking. And on Airbnb, there were these places that are $129 pre-tax just for a room, a private room. And uh, 
I could see staying there one night. I really want a zero. I mean, it's been almost two weeks without a day off. I'm no spring chicken at 48 years old. I'll be 49 soon. I need a break. Yeah, uh, I've been pushing hard too, so I think I deserve it. And uh, the big dilemma too is I do need a zero so I could uh, copy all the data off my phone. It's starting to add up very quickly. And I need to get them off onto these little thumb drives. And it's not the fastest thing. I don't know. I don't know if I could just go in one night and leave. I thought about pushing further and taking a zero at Superior instead. It's another 80 miles from Oracle. That's another four or five days. I just need a zero. I just went over the crest of a climb and I was all happy until I saw this. We're going down and then up, 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 up. You can see two people on the top part as well. And I guess we're going over there somewhere. Oh no, I see trail way over there. I guess we're going there. All right, we made it to the Gordon Hira Yabashi Recreation Area. And there are a lot of cars and I see tents set up. A lot of mountain bicyclists too. And uh, yeah, there's still two coming up here to get on a trail and two just got on a the trail. There's so many. You got to keep your ears open out here. From here, we're pushing on to the Sycamore Reservoir. The, uh, there is water a little past there along Sycamore Creek. So I'm going to skip the reservoir itself and head to the creek. And then, like I said, I'll have to do filter water for undetermined amount of miles, undetermined amount of elevation gain. I think I will stick to six liters, maybe five. It just, I know there's a climb and with six liters, that's just so much. But you just have no idea where the next water source is. It's really, really tough when you're going to alternate and there are no reports of water with an overnight too. Hopefully there's actual campsites available. I mean, some kind of level area. I got a feeling it's going to be even worse off than last night. But I don't want to hike 26 miles. <laughs> like I said before, I'll, I'll camp at that Girl Scouts camp if I have to. Yeah. I bought their cookies. It's okay. It is now noon and I want it 8.8 .8 miles. That's not too bad, really, considering how much climb there was. Ooh, there's another view of the Gordon Hirayabashi campground. There's a lot of horse stalls over here. I guess this end is for the horses. So today we'll basically hike till six o'clock. Oh, I'm on bicyclist. Hello. <laughs> Here's a sign for the Gordon Harabayashi Trailhead and the closure notices. Oh, there's a bunch of mountain bicyclists coming. I gotta get out of the way. There are a couple maps here, but they look old. The one on the left does not have the current alternate. And then the one on the right here has a different alternate. We actually want the Palisade Trail number 99, so we're gonna take that. There was an other alternate in the blue there, but uh, we're just doing the other one. I will be honest. I'm not going to read all this. <laughs> yeah, I'll just keep going. All right, I'm a little past the Gordon Hirabayashi area. I smelled skunk. I don't think it's people doing weed or something. There's a family back there, but I smelled skunk. I think we're near Sabino National Forest. And I believe that's where someone got bit in the face by a rabid skunk. <laughs> so I'm going to keep an eye out for those guys. And keep my distance but if one gets behind me I'm gonna make some awesome miles today I smell it again Where are those? I don't think it's uh poodle dog bush I don't think so I don't think they have it out here but... Ford I see these huge metal pipes saw some earlier too but they're super mangled and those aren't just bullet holes they're way too huge Looks like culvert pipes, super rusted. Huh. 
At mile 165.3, there's a little gate there. And uh, as you head down this trail, there's actually some weird concrete slabs with pipes in them. And one of them is the perfect height to just sit and lean back and rest your pack. There's like a weird steel pipe in the way. I'll have to show it to you. But you can get your pack there. And this is a fantastic midday resting spot. There's also a tree right in front of me, so it's giving me some pretty good shade. And it's nice and breezy here, so pretty awesome break spot. I had my Snickers, now I need to get going. It's such a nice spot. Sycamore Reservoir is over there. You can just barely make out the concrete wall there. But I'm going to keep going north. I guess Sycamore Canyon is flowing. So that's a good water source and it's further up. So I will take advantage of that so I don't have to carry this water up any more than I need to. All right, I'm at Sycamore Creek. It's flowing really well, so I'm filtering a bunch now. Looking at the map and the uh, information, someone put in that it's 6.8 miles from the trail junction to the visitor center at the end and the trail junction is 1.1 miles away so I have about eight miles it's two o'clock eight miles before I know they're definitely going to be camping at the visitor center area so eight miles two o'clock by six o'clock two miles an hour I should be able to get there by six o'clock so maybe seven I'm guessing because it's gonna be a lot of climb Supposedly there's water up ahead as well at Mud Spring, which is five miles away. Um, I'm just gonna bring five liters then. <laughs> they haven't explained how good the water source is, so everything is so iffy. That's what one thing about the alternates is like with gut hooks on a through hike, you can look ahead and kind of see what's going on and you can make estimated guesses. With alternates, it's like phew, you don't know what's going to happen. Here we are at the Palisades Trail Junction. This is where we go left. I was able to see the trail as I was coming down because we came down quite a bit and it is full on exposed to the sun. I think the sun's going to be in my face about 45 degrees to the left the whole time. Um, and then it switch backs and hooks right somewhere. But this first initial climb is going to be a doozy. Let's switch over to gut hooks now. I mean, <laughs> Gaia. Here's Gaia. It's uh, it's in horizontal mode, so it's kind of... But there's the intersection. As you can see, the trail goes northwest and it just climbs. And as it hooks, hooks northeast, it keeps climbing. Several switchbacks. And then once it gets to about 6,000 feet, where it looks like we're walking on the right side of a ridge. And then still up to Mud Spring. So we got we have about 2,600 feet of climb not counting up and downs so it's quite a bit to mud spring and then 
it just keeps going, but it goes down. Actually, it keeps going up. It goes over 7,400, and then it goes into Showers Point Group Campground and Ranger Station. And that is, seems like it's around 7,000, just below 8,000. But that's the, that's the trip planned out right now. This is going to be a horrible climb, I think. I'm not going to record much. I heard the trail is not in the best condition, so it's going to probably be a little slower. And it's all up. So I'm guessing one and a half. I got 6.8 miles to go. That's probably going to take four and a half hours. And it is now 2.30. So we'll be there by seven. And we'll be camping high up. It's going to be a cold one. I mentioned that I usually don't like climbing in the afternoon, but looking at the map, if I didn't do this today, I'd have almost 20 miles tomorrow. And then like an 18 the next day. Because this will be only like 13.2. It's horrible. It's way too low. So the ideal thing would be there's a campsite somewhere up there. But I have to do this. Sometimes you just got to do what you have to do. So easily see the trail that we came down. Just uh, switchbacking over and over. And it went all the way down. And now we're going up. Well at least that we can see it. Meaning... We've gone up quite a bit, so that's good. More to go, but still good. It has a lot of this. It's really overgrown, so there's yuccas growing in completely. But the yucca tips are mostly fine. It's the agaves. They're, uh, they're in the trail as well. Really got to watch out. We are surrounded by manzanitas now, and they're pretty and all. The problem is their branches are very stiff, even the thin ones. So when they're overgrown in, when you walk by them, you're just fighting them because they are so strong. This part actually isn't too bad, but there are many parts where you can't even see the trail. The cairns pointed that way. So thankful for these cairns. It's 5.15. I'm not even uh, up to Mud Spring yet. Mud Spring, if the intelligence was accurate, it was four miles. So it's been three hours. And I haven't made four miles yet. I admit, I have stopped quite a few times. It's a lot of climb, and it's rough, rough trail. I'm nearly there. I'm probably a third of a mile there. After that, I'm going to just look for campsites. Anything good. But we are so high up, I doubt it. I'm not going to go all the way to the visitor center because that's at the road. As soon as I hit, uh, there's like a series of roads from the visitor center. If anything looks like a good campground, it's mine. I'm not going to go all the way to the road. But after Mud Spring, first good campsite that I could put up my tent. Get some nice views of all kinds of different rock formations though as we go up. We're basically skirting the right side of this huge hill. We're going to go into the canyon, basically going around these rocks. Down a little past Mud Spring, I noticed that there's like a weird loopy trail. And the Girl Scout and Boy Scout camp is up at the uh, road. So from there, it's a 2.8, 1200 mile climb down and hike up. So right now I am guessing that the loop is because there are campgrounds down there or campsites because mud spring is flowing and so it's a water source and it's a good workout for the boy scout girl scouts to go down there so that's my guess let's see if i'm right or not i hope i'm right 
I was looking at this hoping this wasn't mud spring. I mean, there's a little bit of mud, but there's barely any water in there. That's not it. Hopefully we go up a little higher and it's actually trickling some up there. I found the water at Mud Spring. It literally is. There's mud everywhere. There's a spring. I am going to actually filter a liter. I have two and a half, but with the overnight, I usually drink a liter and a half and I'm pretty thirsty already. And there's no telling where the water is. I don't know if the visitor center is open, if the rangers are there, if they're giving out water. So I'm going to try to get at least one liter here and then head up and try to find that campsite, which I am still hoping there are up there. Okay, Mud Spring had a lot of stuff floating on it, but it's relatively deep over there. And I actually saw some flow coming in from over there. I don't know where it's going afterwards, but who knows how long this water will stay, though. It's pretty shallow. I guess this is Mud Spring, actually. There's a spring dripping here. Unfortunately, it's not going into the trough. We just need something long to dry, redirect it. But just going down this, and believe it or not, a trail is down there, and you're gonna feel like me, and you're not too uh, say if you're gonna get all muddied up, especially with the recent burn area, and there are branches everywhere, and I got snagged, and I couldn't walk forward. Pretty bad. The part right after Mud Spring, and right before too, it's all burn area. It is so hard to get through, just brush everywhere. I thought it was bad before. Wait till you get to Mud Spring area and then it gets really tough. Still going up, hadn't hit that loop yet. I'm starting to lose hope though, because everything's burned up. Probably debris everywhere. Another day, another day where the sun's gonna set in just a few minutes. And down to the left is like Tucson-ish area. Way above it now. I keep thinking I climbed out of the burn area, but we just keep going back in. And more and more now, there are also trees across the trail. I think I'll walk over. Burnt logs are particularly bad because if you touch it, you get black soot all over your pants, your legs, the branches everywhere too. We just uh, we just aren't getting out of this burn area. I keep hoping that once we're out of the burn area, the trail will be easier. And no, there were no campsites over there. Everything was burnt up. So we're pushing, push, push, push. I'm hoping that first road bit is only a mile away. Maybe another hour. It's 6.39, I still probably only have two miles left to get up there, but I think I found a pretty pretty level area. There's a bunch of rocks, I'm gonna try to kick them more out, but uh, it's a little slight breeze here, but there's enough bushes around it's gonna protect me. But I think I'm gonna call it a night because it's getting pretty dark and cold. And I still have almost a mile to get up there, so. And I'm just exhausted. Here's my campsite for tonight. That's the west. And there's a bush. It's actually pretty level here. I need to pull more rocks down before the wind blows it away. But I think it's, it's way better than yesterday's spot. It should, it should do. Hello everybody. I'm in my tent. I had dinner. I'm cleaned up. And I just checked some messages because I can actually t see Tucson from here. And uh, it actually looks pretty nice. I took a picture of it with my phone, so hopefully it shows up well. But it's a, it's been a doozy of a day. I'm so tired, and I'm ready to go to sleep already. And uh, tomorrow morning, we still have to make up the rest of the mileage up to the visitor center, and then head to the northern closure point, and then try to hike actually 13 more miles, so I can only have 10 before Oracle. That's not an absolute, though. Um, I might just do like 10 miles and do 13 to Oracle, but I will say this. After today, I definitely want to take a zero in Oracle. So I think, although it costs a lot, I, I think I have to. I'm just so tired. My little pinky blister got a little bigger. And I still have about 30 miles 
have to go before Oracle and I'm going to get even more tired. So sometimes you got to spend that money, right? Unfortunately, but so tough. But uh, everyone, you have a good night. I actually had enough signals, so I pulled all the messages because uh, I get I get email for every YouTube message I get. And, uh, and then I disconnect the signal because the signal's so weak here. If I leave it on, it just drains the battery. But uh, I'm really enjoying re reading your comments. And uh, I replied to a couple of them. But I'll try to reply some in video. Um, just because there's too many comments to reply individually. But thanks to all the supporters out there. And people booting me on. And uh, I appreciate it. And you all have a good night, and I will talk to you later. In case you don't want to get Gaia, you can get Garmin Earthmate. And it has, you can download entire states at a time for offline use. And it hasn't, you know, it doesn't have a super detail, but it's still super detail. <laughs> well enough that you can navigate in case there's an alternate.